Stone. Okay, all the team's all set. Great, thank you. Good afternoon. I'm going to open the uh, Town of Barnstable Historical Commission uh, meeting for Tuesday, November 15th, 2022 at 3 p.m. I'll start with roll call. Nancy Shoemaker. Here. Marilyn Fifield. George Jessup. Cheryl Powell. I'm here. Nancy Clark. I'm here, and George is here. I think he doesn't know how to unmute, maybe. Oh, okay. It looks like George has a new iPhone. Um, and uh, Jack and Barbara DeBas DeBasey. I'm here. Okay, and Fran Parks, I'm present. And <clears throat> I'm gonna, the notice of recording, please note that this meeting is recorded and broadcast on channel 18 and in accordance with Mass General, Chap Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, I must inquire whether anyone is taping this meeting and to be please be make their present known, presence known. Acting under the provisions of the Code of the Town of Barnstable, Section 112 through 1 through 112-7, the Historical Commission will hold a public hearing on the following applications. The following applications have been determined significant and referred to a public hearing. And just before we do that, um, I want to uh, <clears throat> address um, our next meeting. Um, our next meeting, if we follow our usual calendar, would be on the day after Hanukkah. No, would be, right. So 21st, the 20th. 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 So we have a choice of either doing it the 20th or the 13th. And we need to uh, know that because um, we have an application to continue for a continuance. So what is the board's pleasure? 20th would be better for me uh, simply because I have another commission meeting that day. I have no preference. Either day is fine for me too, Nancy. Shoemaker. <clears throat> Nancy Clark and the 20th is better for me than the 13th, but, but either way can work. Okay, 20th is fine with me. George? <clears throat> okay, so. Marilyn is here now. I'm sorry? Marilyn is here. Oh, hi, Thank Marilyn. You. Um, are you talking about the December meeting? Yes. yes. Uh, I think uh, maybe, I don't know, the 13th might be better, but whatever. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I, so far, I think the majority is the 20th. So shall, okay. we, go, shall we go with the 20th? I'm fine with the 20th. It's actually <clears throat> better to me, with, for me, so I uh, don't have to choose between one of the other committees. Thank you. Um, so, all right, moving along. Um, the uh, Osterville Property Holdings, 1 LLC, 186 Winsock Way, Osterville, have requested a continuance, and uh, 1220 would be fine with them. Would someone like to uh, move that request? I'll be happy to do so. So I, at Cheryl Powell, I make a motion that we uh, move the Osterville Property Holdings one LLC 186 Winswept Way, uh, Osterville map 052 parcel 002 backslash 000 um, for full demolition that we move that to our next meeting, which has been agreed to be December the 20th. There's I'll second that, Nancy Clark. Thank you, Nancy Clark. Okay. <clears throat> Roll call vote. Um, Nancy Shoemaker. Aye. Marilyn Fifield. Aye. George Jessup. Nancy Clark. Aye. Jack K. Fran Parks, aye. Okay, so we've got that. That'll be on our <clears throat> agenda for the 20th. The next application is um, Niall Mor Morin, 50 Main Street, Hyannis, Map 342, Parcel 026, built 1866 to 1880. Um, is anyone here for 50 Main Street? Yes, Deborah and Dennis Mason. 
Good afternoon. Hi. So you can go ahead and make your presentation, please. You want to speak or you want me to speak? Um, no, I can speak. Go ahead. So um, the property uh, that we're looking at there, 50 Main Street, the building has been vacant for some time. It, it was doctor's offices uh, for several years. Um, and we're looking to um, remove the building, obviously, and we're going to build uh, 11 uh, one-bedroom apartment units and an office in one building, and then also two uh, two-bedroom bath and a half units to the rear of the property. Um, we're surrounded by um, one side. We have apartments. We have Hack on one side. I think at five or six units. The other side we have Cape Cod Healthcare across the streets. All Cape Cod Healthcare and buildings, and we're actually doing a project kind of catty corner across the street right now at 63 Main Street. We're on the corner of um, Parkway and Main Street. So we're just, uh, we're working on trying to finish that up by the end of the year. So um, we just, this building here, as I went inside structurally, there's not much that we can do with the property as it is right now um, to preserve or do anything or that use for it that economically feasible. So that's the reason why we uh, we feel that it should be uh, raised and uh, just replaced with some housing in the area. Much needed housing. Much needed housing. Thank you, Deb. <laughs> Thank you. Um, any any questions from the committee? Um, I have a question. If you don't mind, it's more of a formality uh, to our applicants. Uh, you mentioned that you have Cape Cod Healthcare across the street. I don't think it's any problem. It's just I always like to be open about it. I do work for Cape Cod Healthcare. Uh, I, I don't feel that I have any conflict of interest on this whatsoever. So I want to make sure that you're okay with me continuing. Just sure. Back. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Above board, have that on the table. Thank you. <laughs> I, I like the idea of helping with the housing in the community. <laughs> Any other comments from anyone? Concerns? No. Nancy? Nancy Clark? We lose Nancy? I don't know. <clears throat> She's muted. Nancy, you're muted. You might not have a question. <clears throat> so. so, there are no other questions. I'll, I'll close the hearing. And, uh, Maria, uh, can we go for public comment? After the, we close the hearing, we oh. go for public comment. Now, is there any public comment? <clears throat> Not seeing any. <clears throat> so any discussion about this project? I think it would be nice if we go over the application and uh, hear a little more from the owners. Okay. I, I agree with you. This is a very historic uh, building, not only because of its age, but because of the people that originally built it, which were the Lothrops, which were some of the first families on Cape Cod. And <clears throat> they're much more, uh, they have much larger presence in Yarmouth than Hyannis, but, you know, 50 Main Street's close enough. So, um, and <clears throat> so. Um, I do have a question for the owners. I, the, there's a, a barn on the property that's just as old, from my understanding. Uh, I didn't see a barn. There's a shed behind the shed. shed building. Yeah, and that's been placed there in the last, I don't know, 15 years or so, 10, 15 years, so. Okay. But other yep. than that, no, it's just it's just a single, single it's a, family. an old uh, single family that was converted to doctor's offices and um, you know, the interior has already been gutted at this point, and it's uh, pretty much down to the bones in there. So, okay. Nancy Shoemaker, do you have any? No, I just the the images that we saw that were you know given to us ahead of time didn't show an awful no detail, you know, or nothing of the interior or 
of any of the rot that might be there or mildew or whatever. So it's, it's kind of hot, hard to make a judgment here without that information. Well, the, the interior is, is completely removed from the building. So um, they've, they've gutted it down. Meaning no, uh, no old window sills and sashes and well, no, you can see from the pictures there for the existing building, you have those for the exterior walls and surfaces. They're still, you know, those are in place, um, the, but they're not of any consequence. They, you know, they're not new windows. Or, um, the roof, uh, the entire building would have to be totally redone and even the structurally would have to be um, re, uh, redesigned or engineered, if you will, just to even support some sort of a, uh, uh, a new use to the property so and that's when I when I went through with the owner even with Niles Moore and why we both looked at it carefully and of course um, that's reason one of the reasons why he didn't want to do that because he's busy busy with other projects right now and doesn't really have the time to put into it so um, and it's been sitting there vacant for some time so um, you know Elizabeth could you put the uh, images up on the screen for us that would be very helpful and the form be up i'll put that up when i pull up the other ones again that's all we have i think isn't it yeah uh, there were a couple that were that were submitted by the applicant but i'll share these while i pull the other ones up Can you see this? This is a. This is what was submitted. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to. It's hard to see anything because of the uh, foliage. Mm. Yeah, the property is overgrown too, as well, just because it hasn't had any use for some time now. So. Uh, Elizabeth, I don't suppose you're able to zoom in on any of those pictures, are you? Not without them being legible, but let me see if I can pull up um, another mapping tool quickly so we could get <clears throat> another look. And perhaps give you some context of the area as well. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's possible. I just like trying to problem solve and make that easier. Hello. Hello. Hi, George. There we go. <coughs> Not a great picture of the structure itself, but it gives you a little bit of the context of um, its location in the neighborhood. Yeah, we, we didn't really get to see how much it had, how much addition had been added onto the back with the other pictures. Hmm, that's a fair point. That's it's very interesting. I didn't realize that either. This one here. Yeah. Yeah, completely hodgepodgey. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're understanding that. There's nothing you can do with it.
So any other questions, concerns? Is there a, a way that the um, older part that's in the front could be preserved perhaps and um, the rest of it uh, modified or you, removed? You need to speak. Uh, not really, as I went through it to try to see if any portion of it was, you know, uh, could survive and um, be economically feasible to uh, to make the project work. So that was that was my opinion, and also uh, the owner of the property, Niles Morin, at the time. So I'm very concerned that we're losing yeah. these buildings, um, and I, in looking at it it's right on the edge of where there are already some apartment buildings, which are certainly not contributing to the, <laughs> to the nature of, of the town in a positive way, architecturally or historically. Uh, and I think that that is the kind of thing that would probably uh, just, it'll be another mutation of, of that. And um, I, I, I think we're losing a valuable property here if we allow this to go ahead. I agree with Nancy. <clears throat> I'd have a hard time um, thinking that or voting to demolish this building. Um, Hyannis is, is bereft of historic buildings as it is. Um, you know, we've lost the captain's row that's been demolished. And I think this is also a historic just because of the, you know, first owners, the Lothrop family. Um, and I like, I would also like to see if this could, you know, I think in order to convince me that this can't be used or restored or something done with it, it has to have a structural engineer um, look at it um, because even, yeah, even the oldest of buildings can, you know, can be, uh, be usable and uh, are frequently, and they, they don't, they're not built to today's current standards, but frequently they're built better than today's current standards. Would it be a possible suggestion for a temporary solution? Uh, because listening to what the applicants have said, and correct me if I'm wrong, the entire interior has been gutted. So we're really talking about a shell and it's unclear of the full condition from the pictures of the outside and the damage and whether or not it can be. I, I think a structural uh, check is a good idea. I agree with you, Fran. Um, as a possibility, I'm making it as a suggestion, not as a motion, at least not at this stage. Would they, how would they feel about continuing it to the next time to give them an opportunity to find a, a to supply the additional information and clarification? And also provide, um, this is, this is the smallest amount of, of, uh, uh, backing up images that we've seen in a while, you know, we, we probably just need a little more information. Um, so I would also suggest rather than us putting on a, a, a demolition delay for you now that we, you have another month to um, present a little more information for us. Is that something you're willing to do? Um, I, I'm, I'm, I, we can do it. However, in what the structure is and what we're trying to achieve in terms of housing for the area, I am not optimistic that we're going to get there. Uh, this is Cheryl. I, I, I totally understand the, the viewpoint that you're presenting there. And, and I agree with you, I think it's commendable because I don't think there's one person on this commission or even in the town that's going to argue that we don't have a housing problem. We do. But the um, when you look at the options, it's either putting an 18 month housing, and I'm not saying it would turn that, so just judging by what's been said, it'll be as uh, Commissioner Shoemaker had said, it, you know, it'd be an 18 month delay is one option or it, it you know, it, um, which is a further hindrance, or it could be, and I, I, I don't doubt what you say on the actual uh, condition of it. Um, it would give you an extra month to come up with that other information and, and perhaps get more close up pictures without 
I'm not saying tear the foliage out, but so we can see beyond the foliage. Uh, so what we're actually trying to do is to help you out here to get so that we can get a clearer picture, because uh, at least me, you know, it, it seems uncertain. So typically, does does the committee go out to the properties and look at them personally, <laughs> or is everything on a picture basis now? No, we we would be happy to take a, an on site look. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Typically, in the past, when I've been on committees like that, we always go out and look at it ahead of the meeting so that we know what it looks like prior to the meeting. So um, so we can talk about it, you know, in its condition mm -hmm. and its state. So, um, but I would say this too is, is, you know, if we're looking to try to preserve the property, if that's what your intent is to do with this, then we have no interest in it because I'm not gonna try to make the shoe fit. And just because we're trying to save another historical property in the village, you're surrounded by what you've done in the past and you have nothing but modern buildings and buildings that are of no consequence just right next door uh, that are look horrible. Now, I don't know who approved them, but somebody did in the, in the village. And we're trying to upgrade and bring something to the area and bring some housing at the same time and upgrade what's already there sitting vacant, you know, for the rats and, and uh, the barman to, uh, to pillage continuously. So, I mean, that's up to you folks. You know, if, if that's what your intent is to do, is try to maintain the property, I think that's good. But I have no interest in participating in that. It, it unfortunately is, in, in dollars and cents, it's completely cost prohibitive. It would be cost prohibitive to take that building as it is and try to reconfigure it to make it work it's not, it's not economically feasible. It, it's no. just not economically feasible. Yeah. It really isn't. I, 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 you know, I, we have to look at it from a sense of, of, of dollars and cents. And we were, if you, if you will look at, at 63 Main Street, which we're finishing now, and we were in fact able to preserve the integrity of that building and that building looks, and that was also um, a very old structure that we were able to take it and just put the addition on the back and maintain that look. It, it looks, you would never know. But this situation with this structure as it is would be virtually impossible to make it work into multi-family housing and make it be that that we could even afford to entertain doing that it, it's just not it's not feasible to to take that structure and that design and create you know that the amount of 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 units that we're 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 able to get out of it if we're allowed to put a new structure in its place. I, I totally understand where you're coming from. Uh, and I also want to explain that we don't usually automatically go out to people's property because of respect out of privacy. But there are times when we have been invited and we've been very willing to go as Commissioner Schumacher said. Um, I, I would certainly, ha I think a number of us would happily uh, come and have a look at it. You may also want to have somebody who's an expert in structure, uh, but um, I, I understand what you're trying to do. We're not trying to make it difficult. We're just trying to, rather than 18 months, what about uh, take care of having a look at it and filling in the blanks over the next, between now and the 20th, which we've now decided is the next meeting. That would be my recommendation. I, I hope, I, I, it sounds like the, my fellow commissioners are pretty much on the same page. Um, I, would, I would have to say, um, you need to understand our position. We don't have enough information to make a decision. Um, we have a picture of a house. We know the history of the house. Um, we don't have any interior pictures of the house to show, you know, so that we can see if there's any of the original structure still still there, and um, we don't know if it's structurally sound or not. 
Um, so we simply don't have enough information from you for us to make a decision um, to um, whether to put a demolition delay in place, whether to allow you to demolish it. Um, you know, it it may be may have been poorly used and in, in poor uh, condition at the present time, but it's also a historically significant building. And <clears throat> I don't think, personally, I don't think it matters if it was surrounded by, you know, 10 story buildings. Um, and it's the only little old building sitting there. I think it's a, you know, we have to balance um, keeping historical structures with um, providing new structures. So um, I think, uh, you know, if you could come, you know, if you're telling us that we have to make a, a decision today, I think that would be very hard for me. I don't know about the rest of the committee, but I would have a difficult time with, you know, making a decision today. Any other comments? Um, I agree with Marilyn and yeah, I would have trouble too. We, we just, normally we get a lot more information from the owners and in that area was the, uh, the house of the last sea captain in Hyannis. And that house um, with a demo delay gave the community some time to react and they ended up moving the house just across the street from yours really um, behind another house. There's also one on Pleasant Street where they were tearing down a house to put up a parking lot and given their demo delay, uh, the town moved the house and it's now affordable housing, which is wonderful. Um, so, so there's, re you know, we're not doing, being punitive. We're just trying to make sure all communities in the town are happy with, with those changes if they need to be made. Can I ask Elizabeth Jenkins a question, if you don't mind, please? Uh, Jen, I'm pretty sure I, I, it's okay. I just want to verify and have it on record. If we were to uh, take this time between now and the next meeting in order to gather the additional information to help us with this, and then put it on to the December 20th. They are still within their time frame where it doesn't have to go into a new application. Um, they, it was still fine on timing, correct? Yes, it's a continuance. Uh, yes, I believe, um, I believe there is still time to render a decision. Um, if not, we would uh, hopefully um, seek the cooperation of the applicant um, in extending those time frames. I will double check it quickly, but I believe uh, there is no issue with the continuance. Thank you very much. I just wanted to make sure they wouldn't be penalized. Then we could do a waiver. Okay. Good question. Yes. Nancy, did you want to ask a question? Clark, Nancy Clark? No, no. I didn't say anything. Oh, did someone? Can you hear me, George? Yes. Okay, I'd like to visit the structure. I'd like to go inside. I'd like to see what remains of the bones. And I think uh, I could give you a, a rather good uh, summary of the condition of the structure for the next meeting if the uh, owners didn't want to uh, go to the extent of hiring a structural engineer. I've done this so many times in the past that it's uh, it's rather easy for me to do. I just don't want to be in there with a lot of mold. So <laughs> if the building is not uh, uh, mold, stand by. stand by if you won't want to go in there. But anyway, that's up to you. Um, yeah, again, I would say say something to you is that if if the cru if the crux of this matter is to to preserve this property for the town. And that's what I get a sense of. I do not intend to spend a lot of money fighting with you and hiring a lot of folks. I've been doing this business all my, la my life. I've built from one end of this country to the other. I've been in more historical meetings than most, most people in their lives. And I, we do a great job with what we build and do. We like to do projects like this. Um, I'm a little disappointed that now everybody's all of a sudden focused on the unit when in fact, We've had time enough and notice to go look at the unit. I, I find that to be uh, unusual for me and my history myself in dealing with the towns. Stay in the um, but at any rate, that's your the way you are set up. And uh, now after the fact, and we have money already into it, engineering and architectural dollars and cents already put up in this project to make it work. And now we're finding out that you'd like to preserve this. You know, anybody can preserve anything you want. I, I've done down to three pieces of material standing and rebuilding an entire building out of it in the past. 
but that's not my plight. We're here to, to you know, uh, enhance the area, which we're doing across the street, and put some needed housing in the area. And if that doesn't appeal to you folks, and you don't, and you're trying to preserve that property, that's fine too. I just want to answer, and then then we're going to go on. Okay. We will give you an answer eventually, but uh, you're assuming that we have an answer and we don't, and we also do want to see affordable housing. So it's it's like going to this has been a hearing, and and we have no evidence. We have no we have nothing to to base any opinion on, positive or negative. That's so, why we. Asking so you, you, did, you didn't hear what I had to say. You don't have any drawings in front of you, and you uh, you have no. no information in front of you. Uh, I we have no drawings, at Elizabeth. Right? We just had those few pictures you showed. Yeah. Uh, in mm -hmm. addition to the pictures that were submitted, there was a site plan of the yes. existing property as well as a site plan of the proposed property, uh, the proposed reconfiguration. Um, that that was the extent of the application material. Yep, that's um, all th those are drawings and they're, they're very nice because it gives us an idea of something that's much needed in the area and how that could benefit the area but we we i think we we I don't, we don't want to present the wrong way we, we are a historical commission and as commissioner shoemaker said and i agree with her we don't have enough information yes we are uh there to preserve the character and the historical etc but it is not at all unusual for there to be a full demolition. And we have approved it on very historical properties when we realize that there's nothing, as you have said, there's nothing really anything there to preserve, but we just need more than something that we can't really tell from the, what has been presented. So, so that we're not taking up too much of your time or money. And, and Commissioner Jessup is offered, as he is an architect, mm -hmm. you might not be aware of that, he has um, around. If, that helped. if I may also put in, Cheryl, we're not really, I mean, if when when a house is going to be torn down, mm -hmm. that's when we really want to know what kind of details are still left inside. But for a for our purview, our purview was the outside of the building. It is not the inside. So if a if a building is totally gutted on the inside, well, that's the way she wrote them. But that doesn't change the fact that our purview is the outside. So when we're looking at a house that has a history that's important to the village and is on a, the edge of an area that is still has historic buildings and those that are really gone, uh, then I, I'm afraid I am coming down and saying, well, unless the structure is falling down uh, I'm really not interested in tearing it down. I want to preserve that for the town. Uh, and that isn't meaning that you don't have economic, that any person who comes before us doesn't have economic concerns. Of course they do. And if it's going to be a business proposition and it's not a sentimental one, of course that's what comes first. And it sounds as though in this case that might be the situation. But at the same time, uh, and, and in which case it would be wasting the applicant's time to to have them do surveys. But if the if the issue is I want to tear this down because economically I can't proceed with the building with the property uh, without tearing it down, and that's the only way I can proceed. Well, then that's then we have an issue, and and my vote is very clearly in favor of saving the building. But that doesn't change the fact that I don't that I do understand the economics of going into a community and and tearing down a portion of a building. I know that you do work. I'm not I'm not questioning your work. I'm not questioning your approach. Um, but you can't really say to us, well, if you're looking for the history of the town, we're going to tear it down. So. Eh. And, and, and so I think we need to be concerned both ways. And understanding the economics doesn't change the fact that we need to change to save the history of the town for the town. That's our charge. I would agree with that. All we're saying is we need more information, please. And we're hoping you'll work with us on that so that we can come up with a, 
uh, a proper decision. No interest in taking it on. I'm I done. Think yeah, I'm finished. Yep. yep. I'm finished. Do you have a do you, do you need a moment to, to discuss things between the two of you? We can probably call a five minute recess or something. That's what I'm reading here. If the chair would if you want that, the chair could Yeah. Yeah, I think we need to discuss it. Yeah. So okay. could we'll give us a minute. Yeah. We'll take a five minute recess. Okay, thank you.
So, you know, if the committee wants to go and view the building on the outside, that's fine. And let us know on the 20th. Okay. I mean, the, you know, I, my understanding from this conversation is, is that your concern is with the exterior of the building and the preservation of the building from the outside. Yes. Actually, usually people are very happy to let us go in the inside, not that we're judging anything, but to look at the, um, the um, ability of the building to stay standing. So that's up to you. It's just um, that that's usually in your favor if you, they do come in. It yeah, no, like I, I, I don't think anybody needs to get, uh, one of the last things I want to do is bring a bunch of folks to a, ba a building that's unstable or have an accident or anything out there. That's not in my, I don't recommend that at all. I think it, view the property from the outside, walk around, you touch it and feel it, and uh, then you get back to us and let us know what you think. Okay. It's just, it's not safe in there and it's full of mold. It's, it's, it's full of everything. It's yeah. not, it's just not conducive to having um, people in there and, and risking, um, we feel risking your safety. It, it's not safe. Okay. All right. Could I have a um, motion for a continuance for this? For I'll 50, that motion. 50 Main Street? I will do that motion because we get the correct address and everything. Uh, all right. So uh, we are, I am just Cheryl Powell. I'm making a motion that we, for Warren, Nile, 50 Main Street, Hyannis, uh, Hyannis, Massachusetts, Map 342, parcel 026, built 1866 to 1880, inventory with regard to a full demolition. Uh, this is a motion to continue to our next. Um, meeting, which will be uh, the Biden Historical Commission, which will be December, has been decided to be December 20th. So I'll second, second that motion, Nancy Clark. Thank you. It's a roll call vote. Nancy Shoemaker? Aye. Marilyn Fifield? Aye. George Jessup? Aye. Cheryl Powell? Aye. Nancy Clark? Aye. And Fran Parks? Aye. Uh, I want to thank the uh, applicants for, for in the attempt of trying to work with us. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Um, Marilyn, any, anything from the Community Preservation Committee? <laughs> no, we haven't had a meeting um, since our last Historical Commission meeting. So our, our meeting is next week. Okay, great. And um, Elizabeth, anything on the uh, Form B inventories and volunteers? Yes, I was able to talk to our Human Resources Director, um, Bill Cole, about the ability to uh, solicit volunteer assistance to be able to review and scan Form Bs. Um, he did conclude that we uh, we could um, we could ask for community participation um, in that effort. So we just wanted to make sure that we had that structure set up. And um, certainly if there are individuals interested, we can work um, promptly on next steps relative to um, helping, um, helping put that call for volunteers out and the specific scope of work that, that folks may be interested in participating on. Um, Certainly, giving them access to um, the space or resources here is maybe necessary. I know one volunteer, Philip Odense. <laughs> you, you have his email address, right? I do. So I'll follow up with Phil as well as Councillor Rakasetti. I know she has indicated that um, she has been in touch with a couple of people. Um, and I know Phil was particularly interested in um, working on those form B's from Pituit. So I will follow up promptly with Phil. Could you catch me up on that very briefly, please? I missed the last meeting. Sure, Barbara. So the question had been, um, as has happened in the past, um, if, if if there would be the opportunity for the town to be able to um, ask for volunteer assistance in preparing a Form B um, inventory forms uh, for, uh, for the town, there had been a number of inventories that had been sort of um, identified, I'll say partially uh, completed, um, that needed to be reviewed, fact-checked, um, and then uh, 
sort of accepted and sent uh, sent into the Commonwealth um, for inclusion in their database. So the conclusion here was that you know we don't have a staff member that has that specifically in their job description. So some limited volunteer assistance would be appropriate for this specific task. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So um, next is the preservation awards criteria. Did everyone have a chance to read that? In? Uh, do we have it printed? Yes. Um, Elizabeth, did you by chance have that to put up on the screen? Sure, I'd be happy to. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. So, so. I want to thank uh, Nancy and Nancy mm -hmm. for um, doing this. Um, well, this was this was just meant to be a a point of uh, uh, a jump off point, a basic structure that kind of sets the parameters for the commission to look at and decide on. Uh, also, I would like to know how they're going to be applied, if these are from going forward or if we still have two applicants that have not had the courtesy of a response that met the di guideline, previous guidelines and the uh, deadlines. We're now five months after that. Um, so we're not hoping, I'm hoping that we're not planning on applying whatever we decide on new guidelines and updated guidelines that we intend to apply them backwards. I, I think that's a separate issue. This is what we're looking at right now. And then we can discuss how that, that is handled. I, I need to know, I think it's a reasonable question to know because it, it's how do we intend to apply these? It's I don't disagree, Cheryl, I don't disagree that it's reasonable. I just think it's a separate question. Because we do have, and I now have the proof that we had guidelines previously. Yes. That's very Thank nice, you. but it has, hasn't been distributed. And I would like yes. to have us discuss what's here. And so that we'll have this for going forward. For going forward, I am fine. Thank you for clarifying that. But I haven't seen those previous guidelines. Uh, then you have to look at the minutes from our previous meetings. You need to look at the, the tapes. You need to look at the approved unanimously minutes that were read out and accepted from meetings that happened the month beforehand. You're telling me last month? No, I'm telling you from, um, these aren't exactly in order, January 18th, 2022. Uh, that's one of the times it came up. But we're talking July 17th, 2018. We're talking May 15th, 2018. We, a lot of these you weren't here for, Fred. That's, that's right. And I, th I think that's a great deal to ask of anybody that, you know, just, you know, it would have been appropriate just to uh, ask for those to be distributed to the committee. Uh, they were read out two meetings ago. Most of them I've gone back and found even more. May 19th, 2020, February 18th. These are all access for everybody, every commissioner here voted on these. January 21st, 2020, December 17th, 2019, November Okay, 19th. can we get back on point yeah. here? Yeah, we need to discuss these guidelines. And the previous written flyers that were accepted, uh, and they are minuted as accepted, uh, where I have, uh, remember that Elizabeth Mumford and I were assigned, it took me five hours to go through my boxes, to find the flyer that we agreed on that matches the minutes. I then, because I thought, well, it doesn't really give a date to it aside from the minutes. So I thank you, thank you, that. Cheryl. We're here right now to discuss these guidelines. We're going that, forward. That are for right now, for going forward. 
We're going forward. I'm okay with going forward. So. Um, so, do we have any comments from the committee on these guidelines? Put Elizabeth's hand down. There's a little more down at the bottom. Yeah. And these were kind of questions. Uh, and they've lost one question mark. There were six of them before, but now there's five. That's fine. Uh, no, no, actually, I typeset that in my own. Com my own. Uh, nobody's dealt dealt with that. Uh, I'm glad we also got rid of the. Um, this to, to preserve photographs, artifacts of Barnstable's past London Bridge is falling down, is falling Peter Zihan. I couldn't figure out what Peter Zihan had to do with it. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, that was on the one that was sent to us two meetings ago, five minutes before the meeting, the guidelines that had not, had been sent. Uh, that's this one here, which is the same as that, missing some things like referring to London Bridge as falling Peter Zihan which I didn't understand. But since it's taken out, that's good. I wanted to have that clarify what that was. It must be another piece of paper that got stuck with yeah. Nancy Clark and I did not write that. I said, oh, okay, so, so we, we did have a question yeah. as to whether or not to exclude town employees and board members. My feeling, and I believe Nancy's, uh, the other Nancy's feeling, was that they probably should be excluded from the award but it's up to the commission to discuss that. I find that discriminatory. So let's say that you have a little guy named Joe Abernathy, fictitious person. I apologize if the town has a Joe Abernathy employed and he works at town hall cleaning the lavatories every day, but on his weekends and in his evenings, he's working on historical things uh, and he's spending his savings on trying to preserve historical. Do we exclude poor, Joseph Abernathy, because he works for the town. I think that's totally unfair. I, I agree with you, Cheryl, on what you're portraying. I think so I'm, I'm pretty definite in feeling that board members would be excluded. Town employees, if it's for something they were paid to do, I think they should be excluded. But that your Joe Abernathy example is absolutely an example of someone who, by the way, he works for the town, but on his own, he's done something with his own time and energy to help the history of the town. Of course, that would be someone who would be allowed to. So we we would need no. to write up a little more definition. You know, town employees doing, you know, like Elizabeth gets, maybe shouldn't get the award because she's, you know, part of the town and working on these things and that her her job in history or mine or yours is part of our job. But I agree with you that someone who on the side of their job, wherever they were, <laughs> are doing something for the town, they should absolutely be included. So, for instance, sorry, we're picking on you, Elizabeth. It's not personal. I hope you don't mind. We're using your <laughs> example. Um, it's okay. It's my job. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I, I promise you it's not personal and, sh and, sh and if you do take if I will change to Joe Abernathy and give him a different profession. <laughs> the, um, so let's say Elizabeth or anyone else who is working in planning, but in planning, she uh, also uh, uh, uh. does things historically. She's employed by the town. So by that argument from you, Nancy Shoemaker, she would still be eligible. But let's say somebody, uh, let's say, uh, let's say George, for instance. George has served on three, all three, I believe, of the historical commissions in the town. But he has also done other things on his own that, even though it's a shared interest with what he does, he has also helped to formulate a historic district, promoted the historic district, worked with the uh, commission on promoting historic districts not just attending meetings where there's applications and dealing with that. We have to not exclude people for their personal interest above and beyond, because let's face it, all the people who deal with historic should be interested above and beyond and otherwise dealing with other types of things. I'm not saying they should actually take that, not they should, but they could do. Um, so 
So, for I, instance, you know, you Cheryl, I have to go soon. And what I'm going to say, I think you're going to like. I, I I see what you mean, and I would say town employees and board members who, on their own time, do incredible things. Yes, I agree with you. They should get awards if they're you're awarding them like like George on what he's done on his boards. No, and employees like Elizabeth working every day in her uh, planning and development department. No, so I hope my opinion is clear. I'm sorry I have to go, but. I have another important meeting. Thank you for voicing that to begin to in, yeah. in there. Okay. So, so, and it is, oh yeah, you've got four minutes. So uh, good luck to you. Uh, so I, 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 do, I would not be in favor at all of being discriminatory. And I think Nancy kind of agrees on that. But there, there are things where people, so for instance, I think one of the people that has already come up, uh, the, it was the, subcommittee who approved the application as being proper and as per guidelines and i know we're going to be going back to that but if we're changing it going forward if we're in other words not awarding poor elizabeth for all the hard work she does on planning but if she does planning with something else and it's an award for planning uh then i think that would be acceptable i don't i don't believe we we agreed on the person that you're discussing i think what what the board members excluded, what it means is not getting um, a, be awarded for service exclusively on a board. Uh, yes, it was approved because you were not chair when we the first of that subcommittee from its inception. The two first two people, which is minuted, was George and Elizabeth Mumford. And it was Elizabeth Mumford who went over it and approved of the way that it was put together according to the guidelines. I was there personally on that. Oh. So uh, the... Um, and if it, it was going to, ch she had no way of knowing that five years later, it's going to change. Oh, let's go as per those. So, so town employees, board members cannot be awarded for their time on that board, specific board or, or cleaning the lavatories or whatever. Um, then I'm okay with that part. But we have to be very careful that we are because di discrimination is against the law and i am very much against discriminating against people so uh we, we want to be careful in that i think everyone on this committee is against discriminating against anyone um yes. so okay. i think so uh, <clears throat> so uh can we we got can elsewhere in here cheryl excuse excuse me i was speaking Thank you. Um, Elizabeth, can we go back to the top of this to start? Okay. <clears throat> so does anybody have a problem with the guidelines <clears throat> um, for the Preservation Project Award? I have some comments, Marilyn. Yes, Marilyn. Um, I could submit them in writing if that's easier, but on that specific point, um, and I think this may be reflected in the minutes that uh, Cheryl um, referred to. Um, I think we did adopt the idea that um, rehabilitation work should conform to the Secretary of the Interior standards for the rehabilitation of historic property. And then my question beyond that is who is to determine that? Because I don't think any of us have proven to be good at that. But anyway, yeah, you're that, right. We, that's we my did comment. want to put that in. I agree, Marilyn. Yes, thank you. And there's two places in the minutes where it was stated that the um, guideline, the rules and regulations would be posted on the website. And that would have been, excuse me, that would have been, uh, pardon me for that, that would have been posted on um, by the chair at that time. There were two chairs involved in this because they're the only ones who can actually say to post it. That's at the, none of the rest of us have authority for that. Um, and the rules and regulations are referenced in several places. And yes, the state thing, what I would propose doing is going, Come on, yeah. I'm going to ask for 30 seconds because this could be an emergency. Hello, I'm actually in a meeting. Is this, is this critical? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> oh. 
So, um, <clears throat> all right, can we move on? So with that addition to this section of the preservation project award, um, do people think that would be complete and sufficient? I still have the question of how we're going to determine whether they conform, but anyway, that, that remains. The secretary's guidelines for the four different uh, categories are very clearly stated. I don't think uh, a lay person would have any trouble whatsoever in determining whether any project met those requirements. I'd be happy to provide uh, everybody with a copy of all the uh, guidelines for the various four different types of uh, property uh, rehabilitation. I would like uh, to see those, George. Hmm? I would appreciate if you could send those to Elizabeth and she can send it out to the committee. Okay, sure. Be happy Thank to. you. I always think that when I read them myself, but the fact is um, that we all approve the uh, Pituit Federated Church, or at least those of us who voted to approve it did. And uh, the state then decided so far, maybe they're reconsidering, um, not to approve a historic preservation restriction for the project, which is required for community preservation funding that they're seeking, because in part, they felt that it did not conform to the secretary's standards. So we approved their project and then the state found that problem with it. So I I'm just yeah. adding that as <laughs> sort of background. Yeah. Well, I don't think that's unusual. I don't think it's a first for us. It's a, it's a first for me. Yeah. So well, it's something too that that's one reason we try to have a staff member who is well acquainted with, um, with all of the guidelines and uh, can then kind of vet it. Paul was very good at that, but we don't, we don't have that at the moment. Yeah. Right. So uh, can we go to section two, preservation service award? I'll second. Can you get back up to that section, Elizabeth? Here we go. Preservation right. service award. May I add um, that we could, um, I think we should include um, besides researching, preserving historic, uh, everything that's listed there, historic structures, which I think is personally most important. Um, and the other thing, I think we could um, delete the next two bullets and include them in the third one that begins educating the public of our town's history via newspaper, books, lectures, tours, radio, blog, or website. Um it's all still there, it's just in a different place. Can I ask where you are? And I would like to go back to the two sentences that I started and was then muted. Uh, where would you say you are at the moment, please? I've been kicked out of the meeting. Oh my goodness, this is interesting. Hello. So, Marilyn. Yes. I believe Cheryl was asking you a question. Oh, I'm sorry. We were on the. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> on the preservation service award. Yes. I, thank you. I was wondering because I, I, for the last five minutes, I've been saying things and I keep being muted. So uh, we had the preservation service award. Okay. Uh, could you repeat what you said? And I'd like to go back to what I started to say a few times. Okay. Well, I just added to that first bullet. Um, researching slash preserving historic structures, which I think is most important. And then I deleted the next two bullets and added them, added the essential parts of them to the third one. So that it says, educating the public of our town's history via newspaper, books, lectures, tours, radio, blog, or website. Ah. So it just kind of shortens it. It's all still there. Yeah. That sounds good. I agree with that. Thank you. <clears throat> so you want to put those first two bullets, uh, the, the, sec <coughs> second the second and, and third, third bullets, bullets uh, right. under the fourth bullet, 
No, uh, I was uh, deleting. I was deleting those entirely by just taking the operative words and adding them to the third bullet. But you're eliminating two categories of award by doing so. No, no, it still says the same thing. I just added educating the public uh, through books. That's what the first, that second bullet says. Yeah. Um, lectures and tours, which is what the third one says. Okay. So I just added it to, as another way of educating the public to that fourth one. All right. But we can still have more than one in that category. Okay. That works. I'm good. Hey, Marilyn, could you read it? Could you write it or uh, read it exactly as you have it? Oh, okay. I'm a little you mean, confused. You mean just that bullet that I'm changing? Well, yeah. the first the first bullet I added historic structures documents, photographs, artifacts of Barnesville's past. So structures uh, were not mentioned before. So I added structures. I like structures. Thank you. <laughs> well, I think that's most important to me anyway. Well, I um, and th then I deleted the next two um, bullets by adding them to the third. That is the third, right? Yes. So that it now reads, <laughs> educating the public of our town's history via newspaper, books, lectures, tours, radio, <laughs> blog, or website. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, those were all meant to be um, things that we've already awarded, so that, just so that there were examples. Oh, yes. Yeah, I think, I think that's okay. Um, but it's for going forward, so... Um... In the, how about changing that top bit? In the past and going forward, this award has been and should be. That way you cover past and future. Where do you want that inserted? At, at the beginning of that, because Nancy has a fair point, because it's talking about in the past, but that hasn't been the case in the past. So in order to cover her on the past and that this is for going forward, so, so in the past it has been, but in the future uh, uh, and as amended to include the bo bottling. Mm -hmm. So that would put, that covers it and makes it correct. I like that. We were, we were looking at, uh, we, were, we were realizing that the verbiage makes it a little bit difficult to apply. And so we wanted some examples in there. And these are indeed things that have been awarded in the past. So right. that's why we put them in there. Yes, but then the lectures, tours, and things like, you, you're, you're correct, not all of them. So this covers that, it allows it to cover that, it, it then reads after it. That's, what, that's the point I was making. Mm -hmm. Um, and what do we do with preserving? Uh, oh, we got preserving, right. <clears throat> so are there any other alterations in this people would like to see or suggestions? Yes, fostering historic community and um, Historical, I have to think of the verbiage. Um, Historic and fostering historical preservation within our community. Wouldn't that be covered under participating in the activities, missions of organizations dedicated to enriching and preserving Barnstable's rich history? I would think so. Hold on a minute. Where's that? This one? Oh, here it is. Participate in activities, missions, and organizations. Okay. Well, you've got a problem there because the participating activities, missions of organizations dedicated to enriching and preserving, uh, if um, organizations, missions, well, the, the, the Barnstable Historical Commission and Old Kings Highway and that, it is their mission 
an activity. So you, if you're excluding uh, board members, then you're including them there. It's contradictory. How are we, I, I don't understand the contradiction. Well, if the purpose on the last part is uh, board members, uh, presumably that's board members of anything really, but town employees and board members, which I don't really do, it has to um, only be with regard to certain things. Uh, so that they're not discriminating against. And what you're doing is you're recreating that uh, of certain historical, whatever, whatever the award's being given for, if it is their activity or their mission, you're including them. So you're excluding them with one and you're including them with the other. I don't think what you, I don't think you understand that excluding board members specifically means excluding them for getting an award purely for service on a commission, on a board. I'd like to see that actually stated, both a clarifier. <laughs> Purely for service on, on the on their board. Correct, because organizations could cover you know being on the Katua Historical Society board. That's the point I'm making. So if we clarify the other, then we rectify the one one with the other. No. That means that you do not get a preservation service award. <clears throat> exclusively because you're a member of a board. That's not a criteria, being a board yeah. member. You said it really exclusively works. They're synonymous terms, but either work. Any other discussion on this? From anyone? No. I wonder if Cheryl's uh, fostering part could be combined with that participating part in that final bullet. Yes, I do have that down as I want it. Fostering the community, yes. Uh, Let's say participating and fostering. Mm, participating. Fostering and participating. Oh, fostering I was going to participate. In, including participating. And then maybe you could fostering. add. <laughs> fostering. 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 Fostering could include uh, preparing legislation to enable the uh, uh, historic board, such as the, uh, the the people that put together all the legislation necessary for the Hyannis Main Street Waterfront Historic District Commission. Thank you. And, and that would be fostering, that, uh, in my opinion. That would be fostering. I know of somebody who did that. But yes. participating That's... means you only sat there and listened. It could be that could be participating, whereas fostering is actually taking the reins and pushing things forward. That's what that's intended. Well, that was, also the that was also the preliminary to the establishment of the board. And then uh, uh, the board was formed of other people rather than include any of the uh, people that, that fostered the, uh, the formation of that historic board. Mm -hmm. And we know somebody who did that. Yes, we know half a dozen. Yes, uh, and they are—they're uh, still active in the town, and they are residents in the district. But because of their uh, uh, initial uh, actions in establishing the district, they were not permitted to be members of the board. They were, uh, because of that, they what? They were not permitted to be uh, members of the board. Some were. You think so? Yeah. You know? You know so? Yeah, a, a couple of them, yes. Oh. I don't know about all of them. I don't know that many of them. You know more than I do. Well, I've uh, attended the second meeting and every meeting after that. Mm -hmm. So I can't say I'm a plank member. <laughs> but uh, uh, there was one member of the board that uh, predated me was at the first meeting. And... Um, uh, she has since uh, uh, retired from the board. 
Yes, I think we're thinking about the same person. Oh, yes, yeah. Right. Okay, Marilyn, have you kept, kept uh, a track of all these different... Um, well, I have, I have my notes that I made. Yeah. Um, okay. I was, I was going to say also that final bullet maybe could end with something like uh, beyond service alone on a board. I would agree with that. Our, yes. Um, beyond merely having a position on the board. Right. Which no, I like I like the word service. I think that's more descriptive of what someone does when they're on a board. I think merely is demeaning. Well, be, beyond having a position on the board, simply because service is an open-ended, uh, whereas uh, not just being named on the board. I mean, a lot of people don't show up even. Uh, that that wouldn't allow them on it, but the uh, if we say service, then how long is a piece of string that we would apply that to? Unless we want to come up with a third word. Service, they could say, well, doing all these other things is in service to what they did there. So beyond simply having a position on the board. I'll leave it to Marilyn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. I, I was trying to um, imagine that as possibly applying to an individual who may not, not even be affiliated with any board, as well as uh, others who may be on boards. So I was trying to make it apply to all. <laughs> yeah, it should be. Yeah. Yes, I agree. So maybe Marilyn could, could uh, come up oh. with a collaboration okay. of all of these comments and put it down in print and get it to Elizabeth for distribution after Fran okay. approves it. Well, I would also like, which is where I kept getting cut off before, is to include the stuff that was already for everyone to review the minutes that they've already. Hello. Had. And I Hello. would outline I for everybody. Yes, you are. Know where to go. And type it up. And George, you contributed a lot to that because you and Elizabeth Mumford put together the original rules and regulations. Well, there were awards a long time before that, but there's there's was a really recent thing, but there was never paperwork. Uh, there was, and, and and I've I've been somehow off camera. I don't know if that's just because we have this up. Can anyone see what I'm holding up? Yes, we can see that. Okay, thank you. Oh no, now I can see myself. Thank you. Uh, so this was one that we approved for the paperwork to be sent out, and as it's documented in the minutes, where it was supposed to be sent out, how it was supposed to be distributed. And Nancy, you actually made some of those suggestions. I probably did. You did. Uh, so what I will do is outline that for people, and I will send the stuff where Elizabeth Mumford had sent it. Um, it all coincides with the minutes. Um, and the bottom line was, love it, Cheryl, well done. Uh, uh, might I make a few suggestions? Uh, top is fantastic. Cheryl, great ideas, I'll add them in. That's why we are together as a team. Um, we put this together and then the next thing we had Okay, well, why don't you put that together for us again so we have a, a written record that we can all look at and think about as we, we go forward. Minute it, but I will, I will make it easy for everyone and put down the breadcrumbs so you can follow the path for our minutes. Thank you. That will be very helpful. Thank now, you. I do want to apologize for leaving before. You know what I do for a living. You know I'm at the office, and sometimes there's a crisis that arises that I need to definitely take care of. So I apologize though for any interruption. Thank you. Um, so does anybody know about any historic events coming up? Are we finished with this, the guidelines? Yeah, but we haven't closed it out. Marilyn, I would like to, to get these to you as well. So you might want to- Yes, for people I, need your, I need your fostering part too. I will do that. So I, I will liaise with you on this to help with that and Get you the information that we've already approved and to um, figure out 
where that is for this going forward um, guidelines. Thank you. Thank you. Are we all set on this now? Uh, okay, so we're going to continue regard, next time. With regard to the two applicants that we already have, um, I would like to make a motion, though, that with regard the, to the two applicants that we have, yeah, since we're closing out on this particular thing, we have two applicants that had their things in on time. Um, they've been put up. I, I, I don't know how much they know, and I hope none. Uh, but I would like to make a motion to close that out and to move forward that we award both of those individuals uh, that, that award for these service according to past guidelines and uh, with our apologies with the delay so that we can now cleanly move forward with what we're going to be doing in the future. Is there a second for that? I would second that. Thank you. Uh, was that Marilyn? Yes. Thank you very Thank much. You. So that we have any discussion forward. I have some discussion too. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> well, uh, I think the uh, first and to me, the first and most important reason for historic preservation awards should be for advocacy for preservation of historic property, because that's what I care most about. And I think we've shown today in our uh, demolition review that we care about that too. We all do. Um, and so I think that's that's the basic reason for the existence of the historical commission itself, but that's not in the guidelines. Maybe we'll be adding that. Um, so I think the two nominees that I think Cheryl's referring to um, have who haven't received awards so far, but have both advocated for preservation of Sea Captain's Row, and should both receive awards for that reason alone, because I think that's something we all care about. So I think we should, uh, well, after that, as far as I'm concerned, we could suspend awards, but we'll be discussing that more in the future. So maybe I don't need to continue on that. Uh, so I, I think essentially that's uh, what I, what I want to say is I think the two uh, remaining nominees have, I think, played important roles in advocating for the preservation of Sea Captain's Row. And I think that's important and they deserve awards. I would agree. And also not just on members as one as a member of a committee uh, there, it was far beyond. And I don't want to go into arguing why that wasn't considered just merely to say, let's close this out in a positive way. And then let's move forward and get this done on guidelines for going forward. So that's why I make the motion. Uh, that we deal with these people who have waited five months when our own guidelines say they should have an answer within one. Wasn't there a subcommittee who dealt with these awards? That was Elizabeth Mumford and George Jessup. No. And then no. there was a subcommittee that came later. It was originally George Jessup and Elizabeth Mumford. It then went, Fran Parks, you weren't there from the beginning, Fran. You came in. But not that, they, they didn't, they didn't, the, the people you're speaking about did not consider what was presented at the last, for the last nominees. Not the last one, no. But Correct. They, they were the original, is what it's, I'm saying. Okay, but, but my question is for what we were supposed to have decided on for this year, last spring. Yes. Was there a subcommittee to deal with those particular applicants? There was, and the uh, town attorney's office advised about a few meetings ago that we redo that meeting, and that was not done. And that was, you know, out of respect for those applicants. So we, we, I personally feel we need to clean this up. You know, it happens well, every once in a while where we just need to let's 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 close out positive, let's move forward, let's get things where we want them. If we want to change, I'm all for updating things. I have no problem with that but there were clear guidelines as opposed to saying there were none. And there is definitely proof of that. <clears throat> well, I'm not gonna beat that subject to death any anymore. It's uh, certainly been beaten to death, but I don't think the rest of the, all the rest of the members of the committee has have seen the information on all the applicants um, that, that we reviewed, have they? Nancy, did you see all the applications for the Nancy Clark? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. Uh, it was long <laughs> enough ago. I'm not sure. I may have seen. No, I didn't. I don't think so. And you don't. I saw. 
I saw the applications for, I saw an application for uh, one person that Cheryl put forward for her board. Yeah. Um, no, I put forward for a person, not for the board, but it came from that board, but it was put forward for the person. No, 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 I understand that, but you put it forward for your board, for, for the Hyannis Main Street waterfront, that is, right? On behalf of the board, yes. That's what I meant. Yeah. For the board. I don't know how else to say it. I could have said on behalf of the board. It means the same thing. Um, I don't know if I've seen anything for a... I know there was a building being considered. I don't really know that um, I saw anything major presented about that. Um, and I don't know if there were any other people besides yes. the person. I, you know, I haven't seen who else was put forward. So I can't say that I've seen everything. There was a lengthy explanation provided, I believe, by Fran uh, when she said what the awards were and where she elaborated on each of them. In fact, at that meeting, you referred to the one that got the preservation award as getting it for routine maintenance. And that's Correct. Not, it's not done. This building was painted. Explaining, explaining that's why you abstained. I remember that. And that yes. is minuted. And then you went on to the other two and went in length with the entire for the entire commission as to what those were for. Uh, so the board was presented with that information. Well, and I will point out, Madam Chair, that you do have a motion that has been seconded on the table. That I have what? There's we a just motion on the table that has been seconded. That's correct. And we're discussing it. And we're discussing it, I thought. <laughs> So the motion was for two people. And um, the other person whose first name is Jack, and I can't, re I don't recall the-, the Dominic Alessandro. Don Dominic Alessandro. And I, um, so Mayor, um, Nancy, did you see his information that was sent by the Hy Hyannis Historical? I don't oh. recall seeing it. Yeah. Doesn't mean I didn't, but I don't recall seeing it. Fran presented both of them to the entire commission. That's right, but she doesn't recall, and I'm pretty sure other people don't recall. George, do you remember? I. So, you know, I don't think it, it's appropriate to. Uh, George was at the subcommittee. No, he wasn't. Jack was. Jack and George. George came in 13 minutes after the commencement of it. And he's the one, if there was a comment made about that applicant, remember? Well, you were dissatisfied with it because he hadn't read um, um, any of the material, remember? That is a point. He had not read the material and Correct. he had still voted. So if you would let me make my point, please. Sure. I think that um, the information on all the applicants should be resent to the members of the commission and we can so everyone can refresh their memories and that we can deal with this at our next meeting. That yeah. makes good sense to me. And since Fran, there seemed to be a problem with your reading it, I will happily type it out for you. Not necessary, thank yeah, you. I've already typed it out, so I'll send that to you. So send it to everyone then. I will do thank that. You. Well, I'll send it to our staff yeah. to forward it in a proper manner. Yes, thank you. Okay. So, um, so do we need to vote on, on the, the motion or can um, we I'd like, I would appreciate if the motion, uh, if the maker of the motion um, took the motion back. I will not withdraw it, but I will offer to continue it to the next meeting after they have, people have considered it. That works for me. That works, that's fine. That's good. Uh, as long as the person who seconded it is fine with that as well. Fine with me, thanks. So I just want to mention one last thing. I hope everybody read the notice of the um, MEPA site visit and consultation session and comment period for uh, New England Wind 2 connector. Um, it's, their, it's their environmental no oh, yeah, yeah. notification. And this is the uh, 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 for um, <clears throat> that wind farm, the name I forgot, um, who wants to come in at Douse's. Mm -hmm. and right. that, uh, go all the way over Timbuktu to uh, get to, uh, I guess, um, at the industrial park. Uh, I mean, in at Dowses? Yeah, Dowses, yes. 
this is the second one. One's coming in at, at uh, Coville and is already, you know, and the other one's coming in at Douse's. And they're gonna take the bridge down to get to Douse's to do this. And, um, you know, in terms of, you know, that's a, Douse's is a very important habitat for, uh, um, for birds. And these people seem to think that the only thing that we need to be concerned about is that there's only 1.5 acres of land containing shellfish. Now, the, the south of, of the vineyard, they're putting this up, and then the cable is going to go, apparently, to the vineyard, to Nantucket, and back here. Now, I've never been fishing for sea clams, but I'm pretty sure they're in the deep water. And they put these power lines down by blowing out sand so that they can lay them. So I just hope everybody reads this and pays attention to it because they want to go from Douses to East Bay Road to Wiano Avenue to Main Street to Ostro, West Barnstable Road, Old Falmouth Road, Old Stage, Oak Street, Service Road, um, over Route 6, and I don't know where they're going from there. Is so there something, that is there anything we can comment on historically? Um, there's comment period. I'd like to see the, the map that shows the route that they're talking about uh, so that we can determine if there is uh, historic neighborhoods or historic buildings that are in the path. Well, there certainly are on uh, Wiano Avenue. Uh, um, definitely. But Wiano Avenue, <clears throat> Dowsers Beach and Wiano Avenue do not... Uh, go inside, uh, to my knowledge, they would have to go, if they're not going along the shore to get across, then they're gonna have to go uh, inland in order to get to- uh, They're going uh, up East, East Bay Avenue. Road. They're going up East Bay Road. So, but then this oh, says- okay. I hear you. Please be informed that the MEPA office has proposed amended regulations for public comment. Written comments will be accepted until November 14th. But I think you can probably go to the MEPA. <laughs> nice to know about it the day afterwards. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, I mean. Well, the area where they're talking about going up is uh, <clears throat> it's loaded with historic uh, houses uh, and structures, including St. Peter's Church and, uh, uh, the, and the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah. And both of those are historic structures. Uh, and also on South County Road. Yes. So, so is this is this? Are they getting across Route Six? They're going up what road to, to get there? It just miraculously stops at Route Six somehow. Well, there is <laughs> power. There is a power uh, uh, station there. Uh, just across at Oak Street. Yeah, I know, but I don't think it's big enough to to hook up uh, the windmill. It probably is not, but uh, is there enough land there to expand it? Uh, and also getting to it, they'd have to go, you said they were going Old Falmouth Road? Yes. And, that, uh, and then up to Oak Street uh, along um, uh, what is either Shoot Flying Hill or uh, uh, not Shoot Flying Hill. Grace uh, Lane. Old stage race, race, lane. race lane, yeah, that's part of race lane, and yeah. and then Oak Street uh, to the crossover at um, to the power station, uh, and working backwards from that, you you said uh, uh, to get to Old Falmouth Road, they were going up uh, one forty nine. No, um. They, I don't think they know where they're going because what they said was, uh, oh, excuse me. Um, we are, they're not going up, uh, they're going up Osterville West Barnstable Road to Old Falmouth Road. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's going right by your house there, isn't it, Nancy? Sure enough. May I, may I Fran? <laughs> yeah. So the project um, that 
currently has an open NEPA comment period is Park City Wind um, by Avant Grid. Uh, the three projects, they're confusing. Park City Wind, it's confusing to tell the difference between the three. Vineyard Wind, uh, which landed at Couples, Commonwealth yep. Wind, um, which will land at Craigville, and um, then Park City Wind, which will land at Douses. So they have filed um, an, an ENF with NEPA that is currently under review and taking public comments through the 29th. Um, there are several meetings that are being held um, this week in Osterville and Centerville relative to the two alternative routes that they have proposed. Um, they're required by the EFSB to file two routes. Um, if you're interested in looking at those and commenting on those, um, I, I think that your best bet and certainly what I have done um, is go to parkcitywind.com and under the project overview permitting, you can download um, you can download the uh, the full environmental impact report um, and take a look at uh, I'm sorry the environmental notification form and look at uh, the the different routes um, where they fall and um, and and get detailed information about that project. So um, I, I'd be happy to pass information on about one of both of those projects to the board of desire. Okay, Thank I'll you. get in touch with you, Elizabeth, we'll, uh, so that I can see what's going on there. All right? Yeah, that, that would, again, that would be, that would be fantastic. We encourage everybody, obviously, significant construction um, impacts being proposed to be aware of these projects and to follow along. My understanding is that they will go under Route 6 um, to a new substation. Oh, terrific. Yeah, yeah. It's on the other side of the road. It'd probably be smarter to build a substation this side of Route Six. But yeah, yeah, I think the the existing entire substation is on the north side, and then they would acquire yeah. additional property and build a new substation um, uh, in in that same vicinity. There's yeah, not going to be any Roman Oak Street for that. You haven't been down there lately. Go. Okay. Yeah, oh. it, it's a big, it's a it's a big one, really, in terms of um, yeah. in terms of, of size and impact. So yeah, please please stay tuned and involved. Um, Parkcitywind.com and Commonwealthwind.com, and uh, uh, I, I'll send you the summary, the latest summary email on the schedule and the um, the, the ways to comment. So are these three um, organizations companies working together? Um, so again, I'm not the expert on their on their structure. Vineyard Wind, which is the first landing, the one that's under construction now, is a separate company from Avant Grid. Uh, Avant Grid is the group that is doing the second and the third um, projects. And although they have different names and different LLCs, I believe uh, the Park City and Commonwealth are the mm -hmm. same project. Again, with Vineyard Wind, the one underway right now being okay. um, a separate. So they're not all going to end up at the same substation or power station or however one calls it. No, so Vineyard Wind um, would interconnect in the industrial park at by Maryden Road. Um, uh, Commonwealth Wind, the second one that ends at Craigville, would interconnect at um, Shoe Flying Hill mm -hmm. Road, and they would construct a new substation where the Knights Inn property is. Um, the third, uh, which again is still um, still in its very early stages of permitting and uh, federal and state environmental permitting, um, would land at Douses and interconnect, uh, as noted, at Oak Street on the other side of the Interstate Highway. Thank you. Yeah. So, there's no further discussion. I'll accept a motion to adjourn. So moved, Nancy Clark. <laughs> so, is there a second? I seconded it. Okay. So, roll call. Um, Marilyn Fifield? Aye. George Jessup? Aye. Nancy pa Cheryl, Cheryl Powell? Aye. Nancy Clark? Aye. Graham Parks? Aye. <clears throat> okay. Thank you all very much. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. You too. Double, you too. Double.